In this video, we continue to provide a deep understanding of the Van der Waals and the Burial equations of state by recovering the concept of the boil temperature and its relationship with attractions and repulsions that take place between gas particles. Okay, when we examine how the compression factor changes with pressure or inverse molar volume for many gases, uh, the behavior that we have uh, is showcased in this graph. That's the compression factor as a function of the inverse of the molar volume. And in general, we have reviewed in earlier videos that there's three regimes, right? Uh, one where you first uh, express uh, or, or observe uh, attractions dominating those interactions, and you get a compression factor that is lower than one, but it eventually turns over. And then another limit in which uh, you actually have the repulsions dominate throughout uh, the range of pressures or inverse molar volumes, and then an intermediate case. And, and we actually were able to codify that in terms of uh, something that we call the boil temperature. Now the definition of the boil temperature is um, uh, the temperature of the gas at which the effect of the attractions is perfectly balanced by the effect of the repulsions. And then you get the you follow ideal behavior, right, which would be this dashed line, for the longest possible range of pressures or inverse molar volume. Okay, if you have a temperature higher than the boil temperature, then repulsions dominate. If you have a temperature lower than the boil temperature of the gas, then attractions uh, would dominate initially. Okay, so now our question is whether uh, uh, this uh, can actually be uh, uh, kind of understood in terms of um, uh, some of the parameters that we have introduced in this uh, virial and van der Waals equations of state, uh, which are supposed to capture reality, and this is actual behavior. Okay, so to keep things simple, what we're actually going to do is just cut our expansion. There, we're going to take now the virial expansion, and we're just simply going to cut it to two terms for simplicity. Okay, so when you when you uh, uh, cut this expansion to just two terms, you're uh, ignoring uh, higher order terms, right? So, so the question becomes uh, something like this. And notice that you can rearrange this to recognize that that is uh, simply uh, PV uh, M over RT is equal to 1 plus uh, B over VM. Okay, but that ratio of the pressure uh, multiplied by the molar volume divided over RT, that is simply what the compression factor is. That's the definition of the compression factor. And what we have is that this uh, uh, number is equal to 1 plus V over VM in the case of a two-term uh, virial expansion. Obviously, uh, notice that this representation that we have right here is exactly this graph. Okay, but a problem is that because we only have uh, a linear term, uh, our lines will not be curved, right? There's no uh, higher-order terms, quadratic or cubic or, or other higher-order terms from on 1 over VM. You simply cut the linear term so these, uh, uh, these lines here will not be curves, it will actually be straight lines. Okay, but that's fine, uh, because we understand that this is an approximation, and then what we can actually do is just, uh, try to trace this on a linear form. Okay, so that will be 1 over Vn, and then this is your ideal gas limit, which will now be a straight line, and this is what happens at T-boil in the case of a two-term uh, two expansion, that will be the temperature below t boil, and that will be what happens to the temperature above t boil. Okay, so that is this graph right here. So again, this is t boil, uh, and then uh, this is higher than t boil, and this is lower than t boil. Okay, so now we can examine how do you get to these limits uh, according to the values of these constants right here. Okay, so, uh, all right, so in a prior video we have seen that there's a relationship between that second virial coefficient capital V and uh, a Van der Waals coefficients, and that relationship was uh, as follows. Notice that the relationship, uh, I mean, the values of these coefficients are actually going to dictate uh, in which one of these regimes you are. Okay, so let's actually take the boil temperature, which is the simpler one. Right, notice that at the boil temperature, this coefficient b has to be equal to zero, so that you get your c is equal to one as a function of the inverse of the molar volume, right? So if t is equal to t boil, 
then what happens is that B is equal to zero, and then uh, the relationship between the vital walls constants needs to be this. Okay, so this is at the point where attractions and repulsions are perfectly balanced out. And what that means, according to the vital walls equation of state, is that the relationship between the big uh, parameter and A parameter is as, as this, right? When you get that uh, uh, equilibrium point, then, then that's a, the boil temperature. And in a two-term expansion, what this would mean is that you would actually be behaving as if this was an ideal gas because the attractions are perfectly balanced by the repulsions. Okay, but if you're at a higher uh, temperature than T boil, uh, that means that uh, repulsions would dominate. But then what that means is that this B coefficient needs to be positive because the slope of this line is positive. Then what happens is that, that B is larger than zero, and what that means is that uh, then uh, B needs to be low case B, the boundary walls parameter needs to be larger than the uh, A parameter divided over RT. And of course, the last limit is, is straightforward then to uh, figure out here. That is, will be the term in which attractions are dominating. And this means that your uh, second real coefficient needs to be negative, and then uh, the van der Waals parameter for repulsions has to be smaller than the van der Waals parameter for attractions divided over RT. Okay, so again, uh, this is kind of a nice wrap up for uh, all of the work that we have seen with ideal gas, going through this uh, virial equation of state, going to the van der Waals equation of state, seeing the relationship between that van der Waals equation of state and the real equation of state, and now we actually uh, again continue to understand uh, those parameters that are uh, in these equations of state and how they relate to to actual properties of the gas, like the compression factor, boil temperature, and so forth. In the end, in this video, what we uh, what we have learned is that the A and B parameters of the Weierwald equation of state are related to the boil temperature in a straightforward manner. Right, when the relationship between those A and B parameters is this, uh, that actually happens at the temperature uh, that we call the boil temperature. Uh, and then uh, uh, if those parameters, uh, right, so, so again, this will happen at the boil temperature, so that will be T boil. Okay, that's, that's what needs to happen, and all these are T boils. Okay, so um, again, uh, once you are, that this relationship is true, uh, then you have ideal behavior, if this relationship is true, then uh, uh, repulsions are dominating. And finally, uh, if that uh, second real coefficient is negative, and the relationship between the A and B parameters of the Van der Waals equation of state is like this, then attractions will be dominating.